Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Rappaport. It's now I'm pleased to turn to uh, Professor David Strauss, uh, who is uh, a very fine uh, participant at Federal Society programs in the past, and he's obviously a prolific writer because I was given a stack this high uh, of things to read before, before meeting him. And uh, I must say I found it infinitely more, um, more challenging and, uh, uh, and stimulating than, than anything that I was working on at the time. Uh, so I thank you, Professor Strauss. Uh, he is um, uh, a graduate of Harvard College uh, uh, and then also uh, went to Oxford for a couple of years before returning to his uh, um, alma mater for law school. Uh, and then he headed uh, to, um, uh, to Washington, as far as I can tell, uh, and uh, became assistant to the uh, Solicitor General and an, uh, and an attorney advisor in the Office of um, uh, Legal Counsel in the uh, Justice Department. Uh, he has uh, argued uh, some 18 cases before the Supreme Court uh, and now finds himself uh, uh, to uh, be the uh, Gerald Ratner Distinguished Service Professor of Law at the University of uh, Chicago Law School. Uh, and also he is the co-editor of the Supreme Court Review. And as I mentioned, uh, he is a very fine and widely published uh, author of extremely stimulating articles. And we are indeed very, very fortunate to have Professor Strauss join us today. Um, thank you very much, Judge, for that very gracious introduction. And uh, my thanks to uh, the organizers of the conference for inviting me uh, and to the Penn Federal Society students for their uh, extraordinarily efficient and very gracious work for the conference. I, I should out myself at the beginning after that very generous introduction and say I'm not a member of the Federalist Society and in fact I kind of see things from the opposite side of the street um, and I wouldn't describe myself as an originalist uh, either. Um, but let me just say apropos of that that one of the great, I, I mean great traditions of the Federalist Society since its founding has been not just to invite but to uh, uh, um, welcome and aggressively seek out um, a, a contrasting views and opposing views. And I think that is admirable in its own right and it has had a terrific salutary influence on the legal culture by setting a tone in which the response to people who disagree with you is to welcome their views and not to um, reject them. And I think that's, to a large extent, the work of what you all have done and all of us who are in this business, whatever our views are in your debt uh, for that. So let me begin by saying what I see my role as being, since I have, as I said, just outed myself. Um, I don't, uh, I'd like to try to convince you that um, you should choose following precedent over originalism. I can't, uh, uh, in this short time, come to grips with the subtle views that Mike Rappaport just put forward, but I mean a more vigorous form of precedent that would not, um, that would displace our originalism and not treat originalism as the way to interpret the Constitution, even in a range of cases. I think that is a better view to hold if you believe in judicial restraint. I also think it's a better view to hold if you're a conservative, and that's what I'm going to try to convince you of. There's a little bit of a paradox here, I guess, since you would, for, for a lot of people, and certainly for you know a couple of generations ago, people would have said, well, of course, if you believe in judicial restraint, you believe in precedent. And a couple of generations ago, and, and going back quite far, people would have said, well, following precedent is the conservative view. Isn't it almost by definition? That's what conservatism is. It means adhering to what has gone before and following what, conserving what has been done uh, in the past. Um, to which the response today would be, a legitimate response would be, well, only some kinds of conservatism hold that view. And, I, and that's, that's really the point I want to address. Let me begin by talking about originalism and why I think originalism is not a viable competitor for an approach that follows precedent, at least an originalist approach to our Constitution, an old Constitution, nearly all of whose controversial provisions are also really quite um, old. 
Um, there are two principal problems I see with treating originalism as an approach that allows you to interpret the Constitution. One is just the problem of ascertaining original intent. These are, these are old criticisms, but I think they are legitimate criticisms. Ascertaining original intent is essentially a project in intellectual history, trying to reconstruct what people at a different time thought about their world. Um, intellectual history is a valuable and important subject, uh, but it's also a subject that by its nature is indeterminate and often produces no answers at all. Intellectual historians, not only do they disagree among themselves, of course, but the great thing about being an intellectual historian, as opposed to, say, a judge, is that if you're an intellectual historian, you can pick your tasks. And if you look into an area and you try to understand what people said back then, and you can't make head or tail of it, they seem to be confused. They're going in all different directions. And yeah, they agree that the Constitution should say this, but they had really different ideas about what this was, and the language they chose was just a compromise. If you're an, original, if you're an intellectual star, you can just walk away from that and say, OK, I'll, I'll write my article about something else. I'll find another way to get tenure. Um, uh, if you're a judge and you have to decide a case and you look into the materials and you see that, you can't, I, I guess, the judges on the panel can correct me if I'm wrong, but I bet I'm not, you can't just say, uh, next case. Um, uh, you got to decide it. You have to figure it out. Um, and that makes the originalist project a particularly difficult, challenging form of intellectual history, and one that at various times I think will, to an honest originalist, turn up the answer, uh, I don't know, or they were unclear, or there were various currents going in different um, directions. <laughs>